Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to uh, uh, another budget workshop. Um, this is not an official city council meeting. It is a budget workshop where we talk about the proposed budget, ask questions, get information. Mr. Turner does most of the talking at city treasurer, um, but we try to answer questions and get information and so forth. If you're from the public, we appreciate you uh, showing up. Anybody from uh, uh, Helen was Helena World or KZIW or any other media, we appreciate your attendance. All right, we'll get this thing kicked off. And uh, Derek, you want to take it, take it from there? And we're going to do the police. Yeah, uh, okay, so we're, we're talking about the, uh, the police department's budget this evening. Uh, one of the major things that stands out is pretty much uh, the same budget as it was last year. Uh, but one major difference is the mayor uh, applied for and was approved for a public safety partnership and community policing grant. And um, I believe the grant was $1.4 million. Yes. Um, yes. And so uh, it allows us to add an additional 10 police officers, which I've incorporated into the budget. Uh, those 10 additional officers should cost somewhere in the neighborhood of uh, 300, well, uh, $469,000 this year. Uh, the grant has a 25% match. So our cost, uh, if it's, if we have to pay the, the entire 25% this year, and we're not sure of that, we're trying to get some details from the grantor uh, of about how much money we should have to pay this year. But I've um, incorporated the full 25% match. And so that would have the city paying $117,000 of that 469,000. And that would increase the budget over last year's budget as far as personal, as far as the payroll expenses concerned, uh, about $400,000. So that is the major item in the police department. Uh, but we have some other typical uh, expenses, uh, gas and oil, where well, gas fuel costs will be about $55,000, which is in the neighborhood of where we're where they were last year. And some of the, the, the higher costs uh, have more to do with the uh, software that the police use for um, the radar, uh, stalker radar. They have a RPS system, which is used for incident reporting and evidence tracking, uh, case management, sex offender tracking and warrant management and things like that. And we have uh, some other uh, relativity software. I mean, um, Synovia software, which is used to track and trace the police vehicles. And uh, it also has some engine diagnostic features, but all of those uh, items are typical items. Those are the higher cost items that are in the, the budget, but everything is pretty much uh, the same as it was a year before. Uh, the, besides the, um, excuse me, the, uh, new vehicles are slightly more than they were before. And so we have a uh, slightly higher cost for vehicles, but everything else is pretty much um, the same as they were last year, except for the 10 additional police officers. Uh, we also have included uh, positions for one captain, one lieutenant, one sergeant, and I may have to change this. I'm looking at it now. Uh, we have one corporal in there in the budget now, but I believe that uh, we're gonna have some, hopefully we'll have some promotions. And so as soon as I get with the mayor and the interim chief, uh, we can determine how many uh, corporals that need to be reflected in the budget. But as of now, we only have one corporal in there and that's the current corporal. Uh, so um, the mayor may want to give some additional information 
uh, on that uh, community uh, policing grant. He knows more about that than I do. Uh, but if uh, anyone from the city council has any questions, I'm open for any questions or discussion. Thanks, Derek. The only thing I'd add before we take questions would be the uh, idea of the COPS grant uh, is that the federal government takes most of the brunt on the front end, and then uh, we commit to keep them and uh, after after four, after four, at least five years, and we begin to take more of the board burden uh, over time. The other thing, um, we are in the process of completing a promotional process for the uh, promotional, uh, uh, yeah, the process, and that will begin to start to see some of that next in the next couple of weeks. That's exciting. It's something that I'm told is fairly new and professional uh, situation where police officers have opportunity for career advancement. And um, it's been a very uh, healthy, good exercise and experience. And I didn't really come into it other than the planning until just recently. Uh, it's been, it's been very rewarding. So we'll start to see that rolling out here in, in the next couple of weeks. Other than that, y'all, we want to take questions. And uh, I've been reminded, I also like to add that um, the vehicles, the new police vehicles are hybrids. And so that should save on fuel costs as well. And hopefully yeah. it'll cost. <laughs> I was going to say that, but they are having such a great time driving them that I noticed that they may not. <laughs> <laughs> they may make up for uh for that in, in miles driven i don't know but at least they they do on a report I, maybe you've already heard the police officers very much love their new cruisers and it's done a lot for morale so they've been a big hit i don't know if they're going to save us fuel money though because they're driving, they're, they're driving them a lot so but that's a good thing. That's one reason we did it. So they could drive. And I will actually add off all, all seriousness, one reason hybrids work. And this, these cruisers were, were highly recommended in car and driver magazine, I believe it was, uh, even over the only gas version. Uh, it's fuel injected. So it has a lot of pick up, a lot of uh, power when you need it. But any of you have been at a, been been around really the government, not just the law enforcement. I don't want to pick on them. At pretty much any level, uh, there's a tendency to leave these vehicles on and, uh, and they idle. And in traditional uh, gasoline engine, that's about the one of the worst things you can do. It, it, it kind of severely reduces the life of the, of the engine. And yet, that's not just our people. I don't want to pick up on our people. That is everywhere. Uh, federal, state, local, county, whatever, everywhere in the United States. I don't know what it is about it, but uh, unless it's a diesel, it's very harmful to a traditional gasoline motor. On a hybrid, you're, you're, when you idle, you're using the, the battery power, not the gasoline part of the motor. So you don't have the same wear and tear on the motor that you do otherwise. And, um, of course, it runs down the battery, but it doesn't take very long to charge that up because when you hit the brakes and so forth, it regenerates the, the um, battery. And when you're in, I don't know how many of you may already know this, but for those who don't, when you're in town, it's, it's just the reverse of a gasoline motor. With a 100% gasoline, you use more, you have better mileage on highway, right? Um, less gas mileage in town motoring around with a hybrid it's just the opposite you have better gas mileage in town uh, than you do on the highway and of course most cruisers are going to be cruising around town and so they're highly efficient um, but they're this is not a first generation thing it's been used several times tested several times and when you get people like car and driver magazine coming out with them that people look to for um, sort of the 
gold standard on, on these things, you know, you can kind of, you pretty much trust it. So I think we did, did well on that. Probably one you wanted to know, but. Yeah, and, and I'd also like to add that I was just looking at the, the difference in last year's budget uh, for the police department. It comes out to be about uh, 300, compared to last year's budget, the increase is about $351,000. Uh, but the, the amount that we should receive from the federal government to help cover the cost of the police is about $352,000. So that should be um, uh, budget neutral, I guess. And so whatever increase in the uh, police budget that we did have is offset by uh, the proceeds from that federal grant. And like I said, I think you know we're probably. I'm not sure if the chief may be able to answer this, but I, I don't know how many uh, corporals that how many people were eligible for that promotion. But as of now, uh, there's only one corporal in the budget, and that is the person that's that's the that's currently the corporal right now. And so I may have to get with the the interim chief to uh, determine how many additional uh, corporal positions he may need. Yeah, we've had, you have to apply for it. Friday is, you have, in this case, uh, it's internal promotional process only, uh, but we still have to advertise and so forth. And we did that. Um, Tomorrow is the deadline for them to get their letter of intent in. I think we've got all those or almost. Um, you have to apply for it. And the people who, there's a written test, there's oral exercise, there's a exercise where they do a uh, uh, presentation. And then they do uh, writing samples. So actual case reports. And then there's, I think I mentioned the oral. Um, then there's the final interview process and review of a candidate's file. A leader requires two years of experience uh, to be eligible, which has been reduced from five uh, recently. So not everybody was eligible to apply. And that's where it stands. Right now. So. Any questions? All right. Mr. Charney, you got anything you want to add? Uh, no. Like I said, the, this, this is the, the budget, the entire budget has been pretty much straightforward. There, there, there are not a lot of uh, equipment costs or any uh, just extraordinary expenses that any of the department heads have requested. Uh, so, so far, it's pretty much run of the mill budget. Okay. Um, so it's about 6.25, we'll give you one more chance to ask some questions and um, see if anybody, anybody else has anything you wanna handle tonight. Well, I had prepared for Joe, but. <laughs> yeah. So he, he's not on here, so. But I, I, I want to answer a lot of the questions that I thought that the city council made uh, have questions too. All right. I'm not saying I'm not saying I don't have any. They may come at a later time. I just don't have any right now. I do okay. have a question that may um, 
may seem from left field. So okay. if it, if it, if it uh, you know, I don't know any other way to say it. if it sounds dumb, then please forgive me. Um, on the grant, it's for 10 yes. officers. Okay, so let's say hypothetically, we hire 10 officers in addition to what we already have, but we have some attrition in the department. What happens, how does the grant money get distributed? I mean, do you still get to pay for 10 officers or is it earmarked for any person who comes in under that grant? Um, does it attach to an individual or is it just general funds that can be? No, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not a stupid question. And we asked that same question and y'all yeah. correct me if I, if I answered this thing incorrectly, but um, and, and I think I'm answering your question. The, uh, the answer is it, it can be used for new employees after October. I forget what the date is now. But um, it's not attached to the individual per se. Um, but as far as the issue of attrition goes, um, it all they look at is is new hires, new hires after that day. So um, they, they don't. You can't replace existing after November eighteenth. Helen just sent me. Um, you can't replace existing positions. You can't on purpose replace, do, do those things. But um, but any new hires after November 18th can go under that grant. I don't know if I answered your question, Don, but it's not tied to a specific person. Uh, yeah, but, that's, that's what I'm asking. But Mr. Anthony, uh, I had spoken with the chief of staff and we kind of decided that we probably needed to uh, keep a roster of the uh, new hires just for our information. And I'm not sure if this is, is this a reimbursement grant, Mayor? Yes, you know, it we, is. Okay, yes. so yeah, and so that, that was my idea behind um, keeping a roster of the new hires. So uh, in we would be actually be keeping track of the new hires, but there it's not really attached, like the mayor said, to to any individual person. If you can't understand what I'm saying. It, it, they, they obviously don't want you to replace existing positions with these positions. Yeah, but we need to track it to for, right. for reimbursement purposes. But at the same time, they're just tracking mostly just new hires. You know, they want to see that they add to our police force. That's the that's the goal, right? Is to get us more cops out there. So as long as that's what we're doing, I think we're okay. If we if we started with 10 cops and we ended with 10 cops, I think they might be suspicious. <laughs> and um, Ellen was just saying that we submit the payroll reimbursement on new hires. Good question. I think it's a good question. It was, it was one of the first questions we asked. Any other questions? Eric? No, I don't have anything else. Okay. Well, and as I say every time, that doesn't mean you can't ask them in between meetings. Uh, I know Derek says this every time he's available. Uh, I'm available, we're all available. So if you have any questions, please let us know. Otherwise, if there's no other business, then we will close this meeting off and thank y'all very much. Till the next one. Well, everybody have a good evening. Weekend, stay warm out there.